Welcome back to another episode of How to Start a Clothing Brand, a step-by-step process, episode number four. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about logos, what defines a logo, and how to build a good logo for your clothing brand. But before we get into that, let me introduce myself once again. My name is Randy. I'm the president and designer over here at Unique Design, where we print and we design apparel from many clothing brands, as well as we have three of our own in-house brands that we sell. So let's go ahead and jump into all this logo talk and, and get the ball rolling. So it's a chilly day over here in Southern California. Um, so that's kind of why I'm wearing my hoodie and my hat today. It kind of rain, which is kind of weird for Southern California. But besides that, let's go ahead and let's talk about logos. But before we talk about logos, do me a favor. Click it and hit subscribe on the bottom left and um, put your notifications on. So that way uh, we can keep bringing these episodes to you get all this free information and hopefully uh, you can utilize it. So today's episode on logos is going to be a little bit more about me just talking because you really got to see what logos are and what they're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to flip the script and we're going to jump on the computer. And I'm going to show you some examples as I kind of walk you through this whole process. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get in this episode about logos now this episode is not about um, the taste of logos you know what we think looks good and why we think it looks good Um, because you know the taste is basically based on the company or the person and you know that's something you know we'll reserve for different people to have their feelings about different logos this is basically just the functionality of a logo and a clothing brand and what a logo should be made up of and and how you can use it across different platforms now on my screen you can see um, there's just a bunch of streetwear, I um, mean, a bunch of clothing brands. There's some streetwear, there's some skate brands, there's some mainstream logos. And, you know, just get an idea of looking at what you see when you gather a bunch of logos together. And you can kind of get the gist of what logos um, look like when they're laid out with each other. With different colors and different things and how they can stand out from each other. Now, you see my arrow on the screen. I'm an Adobe Illustrator um, just because I have these files set up in Illustrator. So it's easier for me to navigate and kind of show you what we're talking about. So let's go ahead and get into the first thing. Now, clothing logos, as you can see right here, I have the the Jordan logo, which is actually specifically the Jumpman logo. And up top, we have the Jumpman icon, and the bottom is is the old Jordan brand logo. And the reason why I'm bringing this one up is, first of all, I'm a big fan of the Jordan brand, you know, ever since I was a kid. So, you know, we're just going to get into this. So, as you can see, this is what we call the icon. And the icon is just a silhouette of Michael Jordan, you know, doing a pose. And... This icon is is simple, yet it's complicated at the same time, Um, but it's recognizable. And the important part of a logo is the most important part is that you can make this logo recognizable in under a second. You can see it, look at it and know what it is. And that's what's important about a logo, because, you know, when somebody sees your stuff or wherever it is on a commercial, on a billboard, on a pair of jeans, if they can't recognize it right away, it's probably not a good logo. And underneath we have the graphic here, which is the Air Jordan, you know, um, logo uh, initially, but as you can see, it's pretty busy. It has too much going on. You can see the Jumpman icon in there and the letters and everything, but it makes it hard to recognize if you were to look at it with a bunch of other logos. So down there, it's not a good idea. It's a good graphic to use, but I really wouldn't call that a logo. And to the left, you see it says vector and to the right is raster. Now, this is very important when you're getting a logo done or, or made. And the problem is a lot of people, they'll get a logo and they give us a JPEG file or a PDF, I mean, a a PNG file or a TIFF and think that it's something that's usable. Now, the thing about a vector file is, let me show you. You can zoom in on this vector logo and you can see the lines, they stay clean the entire time. It's not um, getting pixelated or bitmappy at all. Now, a vector logo is it's just created in Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. Basically, a vector program is what creates a vector logo. A vector is basically it's a, a mathematical equation from one point to another. So if I click on this, you see these points. There's a point that goes from here to, and to there, and it's basically a mathematical equation, and it was what you know dictates how that um, image shows up on our screens. And that's what a vector file is, is, you know, it's something usable, it's something editable. To the right, this is a JPEG, and I'm going to zoom in on this. The problem with this is, once you zoom in, now you see how it gets pixelated, and you can see how ugly it gets. Now, if you were to blow that up and put it on a billboard or do something big with it, you can see how bad 
the image quality is on this. And it's very hard for us to edit this because we would have to sit there and, and try to chop out all these little pixels and try to make it work. Another thing about vector file is I'm going to click on this Jumpman. Let's say I want to change the color of the Jumpman logo and I just want to make it blue. I can just one click make it blue, one click, click make it goldish yellow. Or the graphic underneath is a vector as well. If I wanted to change, just, let me just select those pieces and I'm just going to randomly click colors. And now you can see how easy it is for me to change those colors and just to do anything I want with it. So if I wanted to create a different graphic with that logo, it's easier to do. On the right, I don't have that option. I have to go in there and Photoshop and select those pixels and, you know, it would be a lot of work to try to, you know, make this logo usable for us. Now, this is an important part. If you're going to get a logo done, it's always a great idea to go to a professional. And not saying that the unprofessional aren't talented. The problem is if they don't know this industry and they decide to make you something that looks cool, by the time you bring it to get it printed or you want to get some, some something made with that logo, it's going to be very expensive for us to redo your logo or make it something usable. So if you give us a PDF or a JPEG, sometimes we can't even use it. We'll tell you the, the image resolution is too low. It's nothing we can use. And you're going to spend a lot more money recreating it or, you know, having a company work on it to make it usable. So it's always a better idea to go to a professional to save your money in the long run. And, you know, that's the important thing when you're starting a brand, you know, it's all about, you know, making that money go as far as you can. So if you save money up front, you know, getting a, a cheap logo or a free logo, you might spend money in the long run trying to make it usable and do something with that logo down the stretch. So, again, my advice is to go to a professional um, and that way, you know, um, and it's a professional in the industry, not just somebody who's a professional designer, um, because, you know, I spent 15 years as a designer but every industry is different. You know, you got to know, like if you're just designing web, you guys a good web designer, that doesn't necessarily dictate to taking those images and creating something usable in a print format. So make sure, you know, they're a professional in the industry that you're looking at getting into. And specifically here is clothing, right? All right. So I'm going to jump ahead to another, uh, another logo. Now what I have here is it's a Pepsi logo. This is like the Pepsi Max brand. And you know, it's not a clothing brand, but the only reason why I'm using it is because it's recognizable. And the, the point I want to drive in with this logo is your logo needs to be able to be in one color. And I know you're thinking, oh, well, you know, I can't separate my logo. It needs to be blue and red. I need to have this and that. And, you know, you definitely need to have your, your brand colors to separate your logo, but it needs to be able to be in one color so it's recognizable. When you make this logo in one color and you put it on a press wall with a bunch of other one color logos, it needs to show up and it needs to, you know, be recognizable in one color. If not, it's going to be very expensive, you know, to, to try to make it work. But if you want to get this thing embroidered in one color and if you want to do certain things with it in one color, it needs to work. So I'm going to show you the same logo, but in colors, right? So here it is. It's the same exact logo, but it's in colors. You know, Pepsi obviously is a big company. They know what they're doing when it comes to branding. They paid a big company to do this for them. But here the logo is in two to three colors. And we would always recommend keep your logo two to three colors. Don't go over three because... Again, it gets more expensive when you have to produce that logo on certain things, when you're paying per color getting printed. So try to keep it two to three colors. And also it's easier to recognize when it's in, in, in minimal colors. And you know, having two to three colors, it gives you the ability to do a lot more with that logo. Now here's the same logo, but this is you know with all the bells and whistles. You have the gradient on there that gives it that beveled look. It looks nice and shiny, but essentially it's the same exact logo is this black and white version. So it doesn't mean that you can't have a full color logo like this. It just means it needs to be able to be in a recognizable in a one color as well as a full color. And we're just gonna do this exercise again one more time with the AT&T logo. As you can see, AT&T, one color, black and white. You know, we know AT&T's colors, but when we look at it, you can easily recognize it in one color. Now here we are again. This is the actual AT&T colors. It has a specific Pantone blue, which we'll go into that in another episode on, you know, brand identity. But looking at this, you can see, okay, there's two colors. I get it. It's recognizable. It's something I can see. Now here we are one more time. AT&T logo, full bells and whistles. You know, it has the, the shading on the sphere, the gradient, the little ghosted blue in the background, but it's the same logo. You could recognize it in one color, or these full colors, which, which is what makes it great. And, you know, you're thinking, oh, how can I make my logo look good in one color? Well, let's, let's go ahead and look at a bunch of other logos. 
bam, here we are with a bunch of activewear brands. Now, as you can see, there's the Dickies logo on there, and Dickies is three colors. Um, you can see the Santa Cruz logo on there, which is normally in three colors. Um, but as you can see, everything is able to stand by itself, recognizable in one colors. Um, let's go ahead and, and look at some luxury brands. Now, here we are again, luxury brands, all one color. You know, Tommy Hilfiger is definitely red, white, and blue, but for somehow they're able to pull it off in one color. And the Lacoste logo, we know the color of the gator, but yet still here we are in one color and it's still able to stand. So that's the important thing, guys, is you need to be able to make a logo that stands in one color and it's also recognizable when you shrink it. Look how small these logos are. Now, if I take something that's complicated and I shrink it, it's gonna be very hard to recognize it. You know, you won't get a lot of the detail that you that you get when people necessarily wanna take a graphic and make a logo out of that. So let's go ahead and jump into this. This is a logo submitted, you know, by a company to us, Hardcore Clothing, and it's an MMA brand. And, you know, it, this would probably be a great t-shirt graphic. And, um, you know, big something on a shirt was legible, you know, it has a skull, lightning bolts, stars, letters, and all that. And, you know, it'll probably make a good t-shirt design. But as far as the logo, it's too complicated to be a logo. Now, even you can see there's the, the color version, which is three colors on the left. I mean, two colors on the left. And then on the right, it's a black and white, which, you know, that's great. They're able to make it in one color. But the problem is, let me take this logo and let's shrink this logo down, right? I'm gonna shrink it down to a smaller size. Now, look at that logo. How hard is it to identify that? You know, if I was to put that with a bunch of other logos, you wouldn't be able to tell what it is. The skull has too much detail. All those little lines, you know, would disappear. You can't tell the lines in that shield from the from the lightning bolt. And, you know, if you were to put that as like, you know, a, a, a printed label on your clothing or a small little woven label on the side, or imagine getting that little thing embroidered, all that stuff would disappear trying to get it embroidered. So having a logo and understanding how to keep it simple is the important part because you gotta be able to look at this logo at, you know, a quarter of an inch tall and still be able to recognize it. So again, this might be a great graphic for a t-shirt, but as a standalone logo, I would say it would not be a good idea because if you were trying to use this across the boards, it just wouldn't stand out, you know? Now I'm gonna jump to another design here. And this is a, a t-shirt design, it's not a logo, right? Um, this is by Hustle Minded Individuals. This is a brand that we're working with out of San Diego. And this is a, a great t-shirt design. Now, a lot of, now they have their logo and they have it figured out, you know, but I'm just using this as an example. A lot of companies come to us and say, hey, this is my logo. You know, I want to use this as a logo. And we tell them, well, that's a great t-shirt design, but it doesn't work as a logo. Reason why, even though it's one color, if we were to shrink this thing down, again, you want to look at stuff at like the size of a quarter of an inch. You can't recognize it. Like, what does that thing say? You know, like I... I, it looks just like a blur. Let me take that and I'm gonna drop that over here with these other logos. And let's see how recognizable it is with these other logos, right? You can't read it. It just looks like a blur. So again, this is a great t-shirt graphic, but it doesn't make a great logo. And that's the important part is understanding the difference between a graphic and a logo. They're not the same thing. Now, when you are gonna create a logo for a brand, and I'm just gonna just use this as an example right here. Um, if you're in a certain space, you wanna compare logos in that space and see how, to, how does it look against those logos. So now, this is an exercise we do with our customers. Let's say you wanna be in the activewear space. You wanna compare your logo to the other logos in, the, in that space and see how they fit, right? So I'm just gonna take away this middle logo and just make that area white real fast, just so we can kind of see how this logo would fit in with the other logos in that space. As you can see, it doesn't really fit. It kind of does as far as it has a skull, you know, and just a little too complicated. But if we were to just change it up a little bit, it actually would work in this space as far as, you know, activewear. It kind of fits, sort of. And, you know, it's not too far left, it's, it's not too far right, it's somewhat in there, lightning bolts. Again, if we were to rework it and make it simpler, it would actually fit in this space. Now, let's say you have the same logo and you were in the luxury wear space, you know. Let's put it against these other luxury brands. Now, as you can see, like I'm just going to take away Boss logo real fast again, just to show you how this would look. Boom. And then here we go. Let's how that, how does that look against other luxury brands? It doesn't fit. 
So let's say you were coming with a luxury brand, you definitely want to say, well, this logo is not going to work. We need something a little bit cleaner, something a little bit better that's going to stand in there, okay? So it's important that, you know, when you're, you're designing your logo, you look at the other logos in the space and you compare it and see how it fits. And it's very important, you know, when you're thinking of your logo and your whole brand in general, you know, what space that you see yourself in, if it's going to be, you know, a skate or surf brand, if it's going to be martial arts, it's going to be um, the luxury it has to work in that space. So and again, you, you know, it's important to look at your logo and, and different applications. And let's just say you get to the point where it's going to be on a press wall. If you had your logo on this press wall, if it was too busy, would you recognize it? Would it show up when you, you're spending all this money for your logo to be on TV? These guys are doing interviews. And if no one can read your logo, you wasted a lot of money on that recognition, you know, or are you doing this an event like a motocross event? And here you see we got logos all over the place. They're all one color and you would recognize it. So these companies who spend a lot of money on this event, their logos are showing up and everything works and it, it works great. So again, it's important to think about this part when you guys are putting a logo together. Um, all these logos have a different look and different feel and they all have a different meaning behind them. And that's something that we can talk about at a different time. Again, this is more about just the functionality of the logo. So think about what's going to go into your logo. And again, doing this from the beginning is very important because it's going to save you a lot in the end. As you can see, having the correct logo from the beginning is very important. It's going to save you a lot of time and it's going to save you a lot of money because once you launch your brand with a logo that you want to change later on, changing everything later costs a lot, as well as it creates confusion for your customers. So if you guys do need any help with logo design, you can shoot us an email, something we do here at Unique. It's info at uniquedesign.com. And other than that, you know, let's keep the ball rolling. And if you haven't subscribed, you guys, please subscribe at that bottom left and put your notifications on as well. That way you know when we drop another episode. And until next week, you guys, stay tuned and let's keep the ball rolling.